We are. There's Leanne, Welcome, and Diva. everyone. I'm Haley Hi. Klein, and this is Ben Shinoni. We are so excited to have you guys here for our first ever Passover cook along. Ben and I are recent graduates of the Federation's Impact and Influence Program, the Frank Stavis Leadership Program for Emerging Leaders. It was through that program that Jody Heather found out about our love for cooking and started following our Instagram page, Yum by Ben and Haley. We are thrilled when we were asked, we were asked to co-chair this event. It was brought together so many things, so many things that we love, cooking, community, and being Jewish. We would also like to invite you to post photos of your delicious baked Passover creations on social media with the following hashtags, hashtag Passover fed food. Please tag our social media account on our social media platform if you're choosing. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Jewish Hartford and at JPN Hartford, on Twitter at Jewish Hartford, and on LinkedIn at Jewish Hartford and JFGH Women. So let's get cooking. We are happy to introduce the woman who will guide us through this Passover journey, Judy Schlossberg. Judy is Federation's Women's Philanthropy Chair, but anyone who knows Judy also knows that she's a caterer extraordinaire. While she no longer caters with Judy Zagrin events, we are so lucky to have her here tonight to walk us through these wonderful dishes. All you, Judy. Good evening, everybody. I'm so excited to see you all here, and I'm so excited to begin this delicious and fun experience tonight. You're going to love what you make, I promise that. The first dish we're going to make is the Matza Strata. Heather Rubin Fiedler, Federation's Vice President of Jewish Education and Leadership, is going to be demonstrating this dish while I'm talking. I know that you all received the shopping list and the prep instructions, so let's begin by going over them a little bit just to be sure we're all on the same page. So we began by preheating our oven to 350 degrees, and you should have your oven getting there at this point too. And then you greased a three quart baking dish and you put that aside and Heather's showing us your greased pan. Oh, there, yep. Yeah. Anyway, you should have all melted three tablespoons of butter and sauteed up the leeks and the shallots in the butter with just a pinch or two of salt and get nice and soft, just the way onions do. I'm sure most of you know that leeks come in varying sizes. We're only going to use the white end uh, this afternoon, uh, but they, even the white end comes in very different sizes like an onion does. And if you don't like the flavor of a lot of onions, then be sure to pick them just a little bit thinner. The, the, uh, the stalk should be a little thinner than some of the fatter ones that you can see there. So um, we're gonna put that aside. Then you added the spinach, the garlic and the oregano, and you set all that aside. And by the way, if you could find fresh oregano, it's perfectly fine to use dried oregano. A teaspoon of dried oregano will work just as well. You can also add some marinated artichoke hearts for a slightly different flavor. And if you don't like something that's too oniony, you can just use the artichoke hearts. Our last item that we should have had prepared would be four eggs that should be sitting on your counter trying to reach room temperature. So, now we're going to begin the actual preparation of the strata. Heather, are you all ready? I'm totally stoked. Ready? Right. <laughs> if you're cooking with us, let's go grab a medium or a large size glass bowl like this. It can be glass or metal. And we're going to start by whisking just three of the eggs together. I know I told you to have four eggs ready, but we just want to whisk three eggs. We're saving the last egg for step four. Okay. 
It's not egg whites. Isn't that it? nice? You whisk, uh, if you don't have a whisk, of course you can use a fork just as well. So once your eggs are whisked and nicely together, we're going to be adding four cups of cottage cheese and a cup of feta cheese. By the way, it doesn't matter one bit if you picked the block feta cheese or the crumbled style. Sometimes I find it's very difficult to find feta cheese in, in the market. And I have to take the, the block. Some people like the block because you can slice it and make a beautiful salad with the block feta. Judy, I'm just dumping my two containers in. All oh. right, everyone can see of my cottage cheese. I am not measuring. Okay. So if, if That's a real than, cook. If I have more than you guys do, don't worry. Right. Now you're going to, when you get to that point, you're going to add a quarter of a cup of milk and a half a teaspoon of lemon zest. You'll sprinkle some salt and a generous amount of pepper with that. So let's all mix that together. And I'm still getting my stuff ready. Hang on. <laughs> I'm still working on opening the feta cheese. <laughs> I forgot to get the milk out. <laughs> that I do measure. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you don't have a lemon zester, I use a cheese zester. Yeah. Or you can just cut your lemons and squeeze a little bit of the lemon juice in there. It'll be just as good. You can also use a fork to zest your lemon. Yeah, but sometimes the skin is so hard. I've tried mm -hmm. before, and I don't know, maybe I have weak hands, but I can't. Get. I happen to love a big cheese zester like this because you can get nice big pieces of the lemon. You want to make sure it's all really incorporated. Yeah. Your, your filling should look a little bit like Blint's filling right now when, when you get that all mixed up together. If you're using the block feta cheese, make sure you break it up. You don't want big chunks of the feta cheese in there, but little chunks are fine, but you want to break I it up. I forgot the salt and pepper. Okay. <laughs> Yep, I, I, I did mention uh, yeah. salt and a generous amount of pepper. I like a lot of pepper, but the, again, this, the, a lot of these things with this type of a, of a dish can be really how much you like it. Well, that's a lot of pepper. You all set? <laughs> okay. Someone is saying that it's a little soupy. Um, it's okay. That's okay. It'll be perfectly fine because don't forget, um, it's going to be baking and it'll be totally fine. Just make sure if it's a little soupy, it might be because of your eggs and milk and the more you stir it to incorporate it, the less soupy it gets. Right. So that's why you want to really break up the cheese because it'll, it'll absorb more of the liquid. Heather, I am in New York City with Karina doing this cooking class. So oh, yeah. it's her small kitchen and I have no idea where anything is. So <laughs> good luck. You need a little time? No problem. No, I'll, I'll follow the best I can. I have to. I'll finish when you guys are done. <laughs> the hard part is I can't see what everyone's doing. I know. And I can't either. So it's but I am watching you, Heather, and I see you've got it pretty, pretty mixed in. So I'm, I'm going to hope that everybody else does too. So now we're going to begin, and this is the tricky part, with the sheets of matzah so that we can actually build the strata. So we're going to take a shallow baking dish like this or like your 9 by 13 is fine. And you're going to fill it with nice warm water. Make sure it's, it's warm. It doesn't have to be hot, but warm water. I'm going to make mine a little warmer.
Okay, so you've got your warm water and you're going to take three sheets of your matzah to start with. And we're going to take the matzah and dip it into the water, but be very cautious. A minute is really all you're going to need. And you're actually going to shake all the excess water off of it. It doesn't matter if the matzah breaks up a little bit when you're putting, when you're putting it actually into the dish. Turn it around. You see how Heather's turning it around so you get it on all, on all Judy, the Judy, can I ask you a question? Of course. So I have to use gluten-free matzah. And so I don't think I should really soak it because I think it'll really kind of fall apart. No, don't soak it. I mean, I don't even want you to soak regular matzah. I just want you to get it a little wet, shake off the water, and then break it into pieces and put it along the bottom of your buttered nine by 13. Okay. So if you're using gluten-free matzah, just soak it for less time. Less okay. time. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks. So it's really more like dampening the matzah, sort of like yes. somewhere between dampening, dampening and soaking. Yeah. And and don't forget, don't worry about it breaking into pieces when you put it at the bottom. You're really making like a little puzzle to just so that you make sure that that the whole bottom is filled with your with your matzah. You see how she's breaking it up? It looks like it's still pretty. It's still pretty solid there. It's pretty solid. But what I'm saying is, you see how she's now crushing it down a little bit. Don't worry about it because you're not going to see it. It's going to bake with all of the other hey, I'm products. On a, I'm on a video for lots are, of Are you supposed to um, <laughs> double over? You can. Or just yes, a single? It, it'll be yeah, a, I've doubled over a whole bunch, if you can okay, say. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just layer. like, think of it as the crust of your peach. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to cover the, the softened matzah with about half of the cheese mixture and spread it all the way out so you cover the whole layer of matzah. I made a mess. <laughs> it is kind of messy, but it's super fun. Yeah. All right, I'm behind. I actually, where, hey, uh, Judy, where do, when do you put the shallots in the garlic? Well, we're going to get, oh, we're going to get there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So right now it's just the cheese mixture. Got it. Yeah. Um, you're right. We don't, <laughs> we didn't talk about, that's really weird. It's not in the. What? That was in the pre-cook. We pre-cooked it. That's right. Gonna... That's right. No wonder it wasn't in my notes. Yeah. We and had then... to do that before. Okay. So now you're going to spread. That's why I got a little confused. I'm sorry. You're going to spread out the cheese, make it, you see how neat and how it covers the whole tray. And now take your, your leeks and your spinach and start to arrange that all over the top of the cheese. It's way easier to use your hands. Oh, that. yeah. With everything, I cook with my hands all the time. Me too. Hi, I have a question. Are we using the entire cheese mixture? No, you're using half. That's half. Okay. Half, half, half the cheese, cheese and half the leaves. Half of the too. Yep. Thank right. you. And smooth, you know, get it. it obviously, this is a little. Uh, more difficult to spread out than the cheese was, but you know, just try to fill in the spaces as best as best as possible. But make sure, so good. make sure you save a half for the next layer. So once you've got that pretty well covered over the cheese, or you know, filling the as much of the nine by thirteen pan as you as you can. We're going to begin again with the same exact procedure. Take your three pieces of matzah and put it back in the warm water and uh, just for a minute or so and get it a little bit softened. You might even want to make this layer a little softer than the other one. Not a lot of. Not a lot, yeah. I, I sort of liked mine a little when I when I tasted it a little crunchier, but everybody has a different you know different feeling. Some people like things very very soft, and I like things a little crunchier. I like the top layer really crunchy. Yes, I do too. I agree with you. 
So we're going to put the matzah and then repeat with the cheese again and repeat once again with your spinach layer. That looks beautiful, Heather. Super fun. So nice and neat. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's very springy. Yeah. You know? like sp You're going to want to make this dish after Passover. <laughs> yes, you are. I know, I know my husband wants me to. Remember that when you put, when we put this last layer of uh, matzah at the very top, this is the layer that you probably want to be maybe the neatest of them all because that's, that'll be the top of your, of your strata. Judy, I find when I try to make it neat, it never ends up neat. <laughs> I'm I'm a neat nick with my when I cut something I like it almost like it it's sawed off so that you it looks like it's perfect. And oh. do you use all of the cottage cheese mix yeah, for the second layer? All the layer? cottage cheese and all the leeks. The only yeah, reason you might not use all the cottage cheese if you don't like that much as much as you you do the rest of it and you can cut back a little bit if you want to it's all up to you and your taste buds judy i'm putting my top matzahs in so if anyone else is ready they can do that too yeah you did it first how, how long are you soaking the top layer for Still, I mean, I, I only soaked it a minute, a minute and a half. That's all. And for this one especially, make sure you are uh, getting the excess water off. Yeah. Hmm. Judy, I'm not going to meet your goal. <laughs> <laughs> I also um, used a little more salt and pepper than somebody else might. I, I found that the peppery taste for me was was great in it. It, you know, because it is it is a little bit more bland than some other things, but the pepper really gave it a delicious flavor. The other interesting thing you'll find is because there's lemon zest in it, it has a very Greek flavor. To Greek, it. yes. Once you get your top layer of matzah all arranged on the top, as you see Heather does, you're going to beat up that last egg that we saved. And we're going to brush it. Everybody have a pastry brush? If you don't have a pastry brush, I can ju I've used just the back of a big soup spoon or something like that, and just brush it all along up to the top of your matzah. I use my hands for this too, Judy. Do you? <laughs> the all over the nothing hand. better than hands. I happen to love a pastry brush. To me, this is this is a, a product that you need. And the one that I have is is uh, is so great to, to clean. It's kind of rubbery, and um, it's wonderful. Is that a Silpat brush, Judy? Pardon me? Is that a silk hat brush, like one of the silk yes, tone ones? it is, yep. I have them for during the year, but because I'm on Passover mode now and everything in my kitchen is for Passover, I yeah, realized I don't it. have one. <laughs> That's okay. Use the whole egg? Yes. I mean, and, you know, I, once again, uh, it's up to you, but really the you need the top to be nice and golden brown and that's gonna help it get to that point. Okay. So if you're all ready, you're going to pop that into your 350 degree oven. 
and that's going to cook in there for 45 minutes, or you can check it once or twice. But when you see it's golden brown and bubbly, uh, that's when you know that it's ready. But traditionally, I would say 45 minutes. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Yes. I think it depends on your, your, your stove. At this point, does anybody have any questions? I know that uh, you were giving lots of great hints in the chat. Um, but does anybody have any questions up to this point? I have a question, Judy. Sure. If you um, <clears throat> if you wanted to substitute the artichoke cards, should you need? Would you recommend like draining them or rinsing them first? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. If you wanted to uh, substitute artichoke hearts, would you want to drain them or rinse them or both yes. first? No, I wouldn't rinse them because you uh -huh. want the flavor of the okay. marinade. But I wouldn't use all the olive oil that's in it. But don't forget, you're going to be sauteing up your um, your leeks with with butter also. So a little bit of the oil will be good. I actually added some of the marinated artichokes to mine with all the leeks. And I love the flavor of the artichoke hearts. And I've added zucchini to mine. And just because my family loves zucchini. <laughs> you mean you've, you've added slices of zucchini? Uh, my one from this morning, I did slices. And in this one, because I didn't want to confuse anyone, I grated it so you couldn't tell. Great. That's a great, I'm sure many of you can, I, I also think you could add mushrooms. Yes. I mean, there are so many good things that would give it just a little twist. Uh, this is the simplest this way, but uh, so many different variations that you could try. Is it for 350? Yeah. 350 degrees, 45 minutes is the, Fish. what we're expecting, or it could be, it could be after, but you want it to be nice and golden brown. Okay. So you've got the yeah. oven on. I mean, you've got the, the strata in the oven. Yes. I, but I, so I did want to mention one or two things about it first uh, before we go on to the next, uh, on to uh, Heather's story. Before you serve the strata, I want to make sure that you let it rest for 10 minutes before you put it out, almost like when, if you were to take a piece of meat and you uh, roast beef and you want it to sit, it holds in all the the uh, the blood that hasn't dried up in there. And um, same thing with the strata, you want it all to solidify. So let it sit for 10 minutes. And I want you to think of that when you're actually going to be serving it uh, at your Passover table. Melanie, it, you cook it uncovered. Yeah, definitely uncovered. If you also, if you like, you can sprinkle at, after you've taken it out, some chopped fresh Italian uh, parsley on the top. And if, it, if, it, if you're gonna make this item when it's not Passover, you can also top it with the famous Zatar seized bagel seasoning, which really is delicious. I did put that on mine. And I put Zatar on mine oh. uh, the last time I made it and it was it's fantastic. You it put it on good. after you bake it or? I put it on before and I baked it in. But the, the I thing. I put it on after because I was afraid it was going to get burned. Yeah. A, a lot of za'atar mm. is, um, is made with wheat. Yeah. So yeah. hard to find it kosher for Passover. Oh, right. You oh. Can also, I see uh, Susanna is mentioning that you can, you can buy it in Jerusalem. You can buy it on Amazon now. I'll go pick it up for you. Big jar like this. <laughs> they have it at Kenzie Spices now too on um, LaSalle. Yes. Right. Yeah, I just I just shared a link to the is the Penzies kosher? They didn't used to be. I'm I don't sure. know. But um, but I know the one I shared a link to one that's kosher from Amazon if anybody. The other thing, the last thing I wanted to mention to you is that you can actually keep this item covered with aluminum foil in your refrigerator up to four days. So you know how we have so much to do before Passover and wouldn't it be the greatest if we had two stratas sitting in our refrigerator all ready to go 
pop it in the oven before you serve your, your company, but you didn't have to go through all of this on a day when you have so much to do. So right. don't be afraid to let it sit there. I actually let it sit for four days. Um, while the strata is baking now, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to clean up your area unless you have a totally separate section to your kitchen and get it ready for our, for our baking. And now we're gonna have Heather talk about the connection between Passover, food and the Federation. Thank you, Judy. So those of you who know me know that by far, Passover is my favorite holiday. I learned to cook at my Bubby's apron strings and the house was always bubbling with family. And my Bubby had something that our family is now called the inviting gene, all right? If she saw someone on the street, whether she knew them or not, and found out that they didn't have a place to go for Seder, it magically ended up at her house. And I was telling people before that 40 people at our Seder was not an unusual thing. Um, so mostly the people were family, but there, was, there were always people who my Bubby invited. And I'm not sure she realized it, but um, Bubby was carrying out one of the most important mitzvot or commandments of Passover. So each year we read in the Haggadah, let all who are hungry come and eat. It's right at the beginning. And on the surface, it seems so simple. Yet, you know, we all know that there are people in our community for whom this is not easy. People who don't have my Bubby um, or anyone else to invite them for a Seder. And we're taught that even the poorest of people are supposed to have food and my favorite, at least four glasses of wine. At least. <laughs> Please. So this is where my personal, my Jewish, and my professional lives all collide. So last year at this time, I had the amazing honor of working with this incredible group of professionals and volunteers who helped procure and distribute Passover food to 125 families in the Greater Hartford Jewish community. Wow. Obviously, I couldn't invite people to my own Seder, which made me super sad uh, because of the pandemic. But together, we put in countless hours um, searching out food for people in need. I have to tell you that I alone had 300 cans of tuna fish delivered to my house by Instacart. And I know Jennifer Schwartzman had uh, pasta delivered to hers. Um, the project started with Federation and the Jewish Community Foundation. It was funded by hundreds of generous donations to our community's Rapid Relief and Recovery Fund. And it was soon passed off to Jewish Family Services, which still supports the families we helped and many others in need through the Anya Rosenberg Kosher Food Pantry. I'll be honest, um, I, invite, I inherited my Bubby's inviting gene. I love having big satyrs with lots of food and laughter. And when I couldn't do that last year, I exercised my inviting gene by helping others fill their Seder tables. My hope is that this year and for many, many years into the future, we all have many guests at our table and the resources to feed those we can't feed personally. Heather, thank you. That is just amazing. What a fabulous story. And I love how you connected it to the Federation and the wonderful things that we do. I know that we feel very proud of all of everything that, that has been happening in the last pandemic year. I love the Passover stories. And <clears throat> I personally remember very warmly what went on in our family. We had at least 30 to 40 people at our, at our Passover table. And I remember my, my aunt, would take her dining room table and stretch it into the hallway, down the hallway and into her family room, which is where the kids were. So we were a lot, we were able to sit in a room where there were no adults, even though we could hear them all yelling in the other room, we could do anything we want. And I have such wonderful memories of all of that. Haley, I think you mentioned that you have a memory you wanted to share with us. I do. So all of my family is 
located in Indianapolis. And so we would always have a Seder of like 14 people and all seven grandkids used to act out the story of Passover every year at the Seder, where we would put one of my little baby cousins at the time in a wicker basket to pretend that she was (laughs) Moses. So every year we still get together and not this year, but we laugh about it. And, you know, all the years of putting on plays and singing and, you know, it's just one of the fondest memories we have. And, um, I miss it. So it's great. Oh, I love it, Haley. That's great. (laughs) If anybody else has any great stories, put a little, a little note about it in the, in the chat and we'll see if we can get to that later. So now we're going to begin with our chocolate macaroons. Yum. Speaking of Bobby's or grandmother's, this recipe comes from Jody Angles, Bobby. Jody is our Director of Community Impact and Leadership, and she's going to be preparing this recipe for us. Are you there, Jody? I see you. I am, I am. Hello. You, with, your mix, with your fabulous mixer. Yes. So the first step is to melt the chocolate chips. Now, I don't know how many of you younger people on, on the Zoom know what a double boiler is, but my mother always had a double boiler and I ended up taking the double boiler to my house. It was like a pot within a pot. I don't even know if you can get them anymore, but they're the best thing for melting chocolate. You, but on the other hand, you can always take, like Jody is, a glass bowl and put it over in a pot, over a pot that's also boiling water and let it melt like, just like that. Or the third way, of course, we all know you can put it in the microwave. Just be careful with the microwave. Only do it in 30 second increments. And each time take it out and give it a stir because it's more melted than you think and you, you definitely don't want to burn it. Yeah, I'm going to put mine in the microwave, so I'm going to turn off my volume so you all have to hear my microwave. (laughs) How much are we putting in? One thing? Say that again? How much uh, chocolate chips are we using? We we used about a bag, right? A whole bag. bag. I used a bag. I actually when I made them, made a little extra because as a hint, after the, the cookies were, were completely baked, I took them and when they cooled off and I dipped the top of them in some melted chocolate. And so it became like a little mountain of chocolate. <laughs> so I made a little extra. So how is, how is yours coming out, Jody? Has it melted yet? No, I don't think so. It took me, I've made these a couple times now, and it takes about a minute and a half. Um, so this was just the first 30 seconds, so I'm going to put it in again. Yeah. Feel free to put into the chat a favorite Passover food that's meaningful in your family, and we'd love to see it. I, I could read some of them if you, if you do that. Judy, I love that you, um, I love that you, dip them in chocolate afterwards. Say that you love what? I love that you dip them in chocolate afterwards. That makes it all the better. So good. And you can also dip them in chocolate and then just touch the very top of it with some finely chopped almonds. And you've got like a little ski mountain. I know it, it, the chocolate chips melted and reformed. (laughs) (laughs) You see how uh, Jody's after the second 30 seconds is definitely not melted, but the very bottom is where all the melted and she's gonna mix it in. Oh, Haley's saying that she loves matzo ball soup. Absolutely. Matzo crack, yeah, the candy, yeah. Apricot matzo f- fearful kugel. Wow. How 
How's it going, Jody? Still cooking? Good. We got one more second. Here we go. Here but the go. bowl gets really hot after the third 30 seconds. Yeah. So yep. oh. be careful. <laughs> but this usually does the trick. There Mine's we go. Mine's a little bit longer. Uh, yep. Now you see how it's, once she mixes it in, it's going to be melted. Right. They melt themselves once they. Right. I won't have to put it in again. There we go. Oh, we might have to <laughs> working. All right, so now that the, those are melted, the Wait, next thing. Judy, I don't think we're all up to you yet. Okay, sorry. I can only see Jody. <laughs> That looks perfect, Jody. Yeah, it definitely, and, and I did put in a little bit of that coconut oil, which just, um, for some reason, it really helps. Yep, it does. Now it's super smooth. You know, one thing we could do is, um, you. I see some people are willing to uh, share their recipes. We could give you an address to send them to and, you know, a, um, an email um, address to send them to. And it would be great to, to uh, get a little collection and, and uh, send them to everybody that came tonight. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna beat our egg whites to make a meringue. If your mixer is very loud, which I have a feeling that Jody's is, yeah. You might want to put yourself on mute. I did I did practice making my meringue over the weekend and it took about two minutes or a little bit more. So I'll mute myself and start that. With four eggs, correct? Yeah. Yeah, four egg whites. <clears throat> Just the egg whites. Yeah. How many egg whites? Four. Four. Sorry, it's also dinner time. So of course I'm multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got you got your egg whites in there and you're going yep, to- Yep, I'm locked and loaded. I'm gonna mute and then uh, you can watch me make my egg whites. Yeah. Don't be concerned if your egg whites don't peak to a solid peak because that happened to us when we were trying it a couple of weeks ago. You, you just never know. And if, if it doesn't get to a solid peak, then it still works and your, your um, cookies might not be as tall as somebody else's, but they're still gonna taste delicious. Yes, you're right, Sam. Not as pretty, but just as tasty, especially if you dip them in chocolate. You can never get too much chocolate. As you're beating the egg whites, we're gonna add the sugar and continue beating until the stiff peaks form, or as we said, as stiff as they can. Yours are looking good, Joni. How much sugar? How much sugar? Jody, how much sugar? One cup, I think. One cup. Thank you. You're welcome. We're also going to fold in the salt and the vanilla at this point, too. Could you repeat at what point we put this uh, sugar in as you were as you're beating add it slowly continue okay. be, continue beating and slowly add the sugar oops i don't have a cup of sugar it's okay take your time i think mine might be good it looks good that looks good yeah or a little more judy it's not oh yeah, no, it's not. It when it was no, going around, it looked like it was it had peaked. all right. 
I'm going to turn it back on. Okay. See, it look, from this view now, it looks like it's, it's peaking, but uh, maybe not. But like I said, don't worry, they're still going to taste delicious. Is it possible to overbeat them, Judy? Not really. I mean, when, when you think you're going to be overbeating them, you'll, you will know to stop because they really, if, if, they're, if they really reach the peak that they're supposed to, they will be definite peaks. Yeah, that's better. Oh yeah. Now you're gonna gently fold in the salt and the vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla and a half a teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon of vanilla. If you overbeat, what happens is your you get marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't not, think you get I don't, I don't think you're gonna get to that point because you will but see But I don't want to see marshmallow. You'll see the peaks. And the best. All right, one. sorry guys. Like I said, everybody, everything happens at once. So I'm putting in the salt now. Yep. Uh, half a teaspoon. A teaspoon and a teaspoon of vanilla. Oh my. And a teaspoon of vanilla. And after you, after you do the vanilla. You're going to start to very carefully fold in your melted chocolate. I suggest you, I personally use a nice, as big a spatula as I can this find. This is my big spatula. That's what I like, a big rubber spatula. And see, she doesn't really have peaks in hers. No, it's yeah. going to work perfectly fine. Okay. Your oven should already be ready for the cookies because you had it on for the strata at 350 degrees. So you should be ready, ready for the cookies too. All right, I think I folded. You did, you did it? Yeah, what was next? I don't, do I see the chocolate in there? Fold the chocolate. Oh no, put the chocolate in too? Yeah, you have to add- I, I missed that part. And the coconut to your egg mixture. All right, here comes the chocolate. When, uh, when do we? I'm so, I'm, I'm sorry, my mix is on the other side of the room. So we add the chocolate and yeah, then. And, yeah, and you're going to fold that in as, as well as three cups of coconut. And that's going to give you this, a little more body to everything. Is the chocolate going to be too hot? No, it'll be fine. It should be fine. Remember last time, Judy, I just dumped the whole bag right in? You just dumped it in, exactly. I did. I just dumped the whole bag in. They were still good. Yeah, Oops. delicious. The more, the merrier. Right. Third cup. And it'll also make it a little thicker. <laughs> yeah, it did. All right, we got everything in there now. Okay, now fold it in together. My mouth is actually watering looking at it. <laughs> These were always my favorite cookies and my mom used to make them and then she stopped making them because she doesn't like coconut. Oh, and so I oh, took the recipe and started making them myself. So you can imagine how good it'll taste. If you dip oh my it gosh. in melted chocolate and then in some chopped, finely chopped nuts of any kind. Judy, how about flaky salt? Ooh. Like salt cho chocolate? Why not? Delicious. I might try that. I have some of that pink Himalayan salt that yes. I can. Oh, I do too. Do a, like a rough yes. grind on. Yep, that would be delicious. Do you have to bake that or? Yeah, you have to put that on before you bake them, huh? 
Yes. I don't know. I think it's on when they're hot. Huh? Are you going? I, well, I use this salt like in baking. I use that salt in baking. So what happened to you? Did you fall asleep? <laughs> I okay, so here's, just, here's, another, here's another trick coming. As you I can, took this out. Does this look done? What? That looks perfect. Yeah, this is done. Yeah. You okay. see, Joni has a piece of parchment paper on her big tray there. Well, if you never found parchment paper and you don't have it, take a paper bag from the supermarket and cut off the square from the front and the back and use that as your parchment. It works fine. Mm. Well, wow. that's interesting. Use a teaspoon from your silverware drawer or a, even You're a leaving? measuring table drop the cookies. <laughs> they do tend to spread out, so I yeah. place them kind of far apart. <laughs> Especially if the whites didn't completely right. uh, peak as we wanted them to. But that looks so they good, still, Jody. <laughs> yeah, they still taste delicious. Yeah. They taste Even amazing. Even if they're flat. We're going to be baking these um, macaroons for about 10 or 12 minutes. When you made them, Jody, did you find you needed a little more time? I did, because I think I make them big. Yeah. <laughs> so I did this for the full 12. I needed them a little bit more the first time. Yeah. Because I made them enormous. Too big. <laughs> well, the other yeah. thing to be careful of is that sometimes, like you'll start off and you'll make them so big. Like I think that first one, Jody, looks bigger than yeah. the others. And then you have <laughs> others that aren't quite as big. So they're not going to bake evenly. So try to make them as evenly yeah. sized as possible. They do. It's interesting though, because the bigger ones are chewier or gooier and the smaller ones are crunchier. So crunchier. depending on what you like. Yeah. Gooey all the way. I'm on yeah. team gooey. <laughs> well, definitely team goo gooey or team crunchy? I like crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i put salt or or nuts the nuts made crunchy mm. i wonder what it would be like if we put nuts inside oh i'm sure you can because like as a kid you know how everyone sold barton's candy yeah. and everything oh, yeah and so they always had like almond macaroons or mm -hmm. well and i always tell people that these remind me of mounds bars and if you put the almond on, on it or in it, it would probably be like Almond Joys. Almond Joy. Yeah. If you like, if you got this, the sliced almonds, the slivers or slices yeah. and you, and you toasted them really lightly on top of the stove, I bet that would be great. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. With the sea salt. That one looks a little small. This one looks a little small. All right. And the batter cookie batter will harden a little bit while you're in between baking batches, but it's okay. You just keep scooping yeah. it. Actually, it's better. Yeah, it's easier. It's not as gooey. It's not as messy. Don't, but, don't worry if you're going to put the cookies in with the strata. It'll be fine. I'm going to try putting a little salt on some of these. Is that your Himalayan salt? Yeah, that's my pink salt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to see what happens. I'm just going to yeah, put it on the first three. There we go. Okay. So in the meantime, while they're finishing off, yeah, I know you want to lick your fingers. I do too. I do. Can I? Yes, I just did. Let's review. Live on done. camera. <laughs> Heather cooked Estrada ahead of time so she can show us what it looks like. Let's let's see, Heather. Oh, I was just putting salt on my. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> macaroons but i'm bringing it out now okay i even put it in the oven again so that it looks like food tv <laughs> just so you know my strata is not the one i made tonight is not ready right oh Oh, delicious. Mm. 
Can everyone see? Yeah. I want to taste What? I want to taste it. I know. I know. <laughs> are, are you, you don't want to cut into it, right? No. No. <laughs> it has to go into the freezer for me for a little while. Oh, no. oh and look at Jody's cookies. Oh, look at them. Jody, wow. how, how oh, many cookies look, does this batch oh, make? How many cookies? It makes like 36. It's a lot. It makes about yeah. three dozen. Yeah. Unless how many make, minutes in the oven? I want one, Jody. Like, is it about 12? <laughs> they're good, about 12. And these are a couple days old, but you can see they're still gooey inside. Oh, wow. They're really good. That looks really good. That looks wonderful. So it didn't, it didn't matter if, you, if the peaks were high or they were solid or they were yeah. soft. It still looks wonderful. Thank you. It's yummy. Look at someone's talking about searching for the Afikoman. <laughs> Don't we all love that? I still love that. While we wait for our Strata and cookies to get out, come out of the oven, I'm going to welcome back our co-chairs, Haley and Ben. Haley? That was fantastic, Judy. Thank you so much for taking us on this journey this evening. We can't wait to eat everything. I know we've been sampling along the way. Um, the house is super warm, smells amazing, and we're ready for Passover. For those of you who cooked along with us, is there anything you want to share with us or the group about how your experience was? I know I commented in the chat that we did not get stiff peaks over here. So um, ours was so-so, but, or does anyone have any, they do look great though. Um, or does anyone have any questions for Judy or any of our chefs? Feel free to speak up. I can weigh in on the stiff peaks if you're interested. I think everybody was sort of. What? Like stiff peaks. Okay. So. I actually did two because I made my own recipe jumping off from what Jody provided just based on what I had at home. So I prepared two egg whites because I wanted to have it. So those were room temperature. And then I decided to add another egg white after um, in a different, you know, in a separate mixing. And both of them, I got stiff peaks. So it was a cold egg and the room temperature egg. And the way I achieved that was I think a little bit of arrowroot is what achieved. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. Good idea. Good idea. Cream of tartar also will um, help with stiff peaks. Judy, um, how do you know when they're done? The the cookies. I mean, how do you know they're not too gooey in the middle? Well, it, it calls for ten to twelve minutes, but okay. um, it again, <clears throat> again, I think this is. Uh, you know, really how you want to enjoy them. I think gooey in the inside <laughs> is what I, what I want to see. So I'm going to air for a little less. But if you see, you can see how um, we're in Jody's screen, how um, solid and crispy they are on the top. Yep. That's, that's when you know that they're done. And you maybe you could take one out of the oven and see if it looks like how you enjoy your cookies. And if not, continue to keep it in a little bit. Okay. A you do have to um, you do have to let them cool slightly before you either take the parchment off the pan and let them cool on the parchment, or let them cool for a little bit because they do. If you try to um, what's that spatula them too soon, they fall apart because they, they, they are so delicate. They need to cool in order to really form. Once they chocolate cool. chip cookies right. are the same way. <laughs> um, oh, Michelle Parker has a question. Have a question. Oh, yeah. Do we, right. can you free, can you have them now and they are still good Saturday, Sunday night for satyrs or should they be Absolutely. freezing? Absolutely. Oh yeah. I have some that I made the other day in just an airtight like Tupperware, but I also have a bag of them in the freezer to save for someone else. And you can just let them thaw and they're perfectly fine out of the freezer too. It happens to be one of those items that, again, just like the Strata, that you could make in advance, make a big bag of them and put them in your freezer and they're just as good. Yeah, I do put um, parchment in between the layers of the cookies just because so they don't stick together until mm -hmm. they're really cool. Mm -hmm. And if you make them gooey, you definitely are going to need something in between the layers like plastic wrapper. I definitely wait till they're cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. because no matter even if they're slightly warm, 
Yeah, yeah they're still in a little bit. Yeah. But again, if, you, if you're you looking at them, you see they're not a perfect science as far as the way they're shaped or the way they look, it doesn't matter. They're going to taste so delicious. Whatever the shape yours comes out is, is going to be perfectly fine. They're not I the prettiest to, cookie, but they're delicious. And I'm I have doing, to tell you, I do not like macaroons and these blew me away. Yeah. I love them. I agree. I agree. So during the, I during the rest these. of the year, I Sorry. use a small ice cream scooper to take the cookies out so that they're all pretty much even. And, That's a good idea they, too. and they come Coffee. right out. That's a really good idea. Good idea, Shirley. Excellent. I, I was going to uh, pin um, point you over to the strata and say it, how nice you could imagine how nice it would look with either the seasoning that we talked about or um, you know just some herbs that are uh, chopped up finely and sprinkled on the top. It would look very nice. Any and it tastes delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. Save me a piece. <laughs> I'm actually going to try it with with mushrooms the next time. I like the the idea of putting mushrooms. In. Mushrooms always taste good. <laughs> yes, and they make things taste delicious. We use mushrooms in ours. So. How did this come out, Leanne? Uh, I can't believe it. I made everything just now, but it's done. It's everything's in the oven, so we'll see. <laughs> Isn't that great? We were eating the cookies for our dinner because we were starving. So <laughs> <laughs> they were not cooked yet, okay? So, but they were good. Awesome. <laughs> but of course we have the wine that went with it. So, hey, everything's great. Even better. I will say that I have eaten the matzo strata for every meal, not in the same day, but it makes a great breakfast because of all the cheese and egg or lunch or dinner. And mm -hmm. it's so good. <laughs> It's good for any time. Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. You, you guys ought to make a Passover cookbook. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. How do you really feel? Then. Well, we need yeah. more recipes. <laughs> hey, These are my um, are, you going to, are you going to be introducing Carolyn to us? Yes, I am. So, again, we are so glad that everyone has taken time out of their night to join us. Before we go, I want to introduce Carolyn Gitlin, the Federation's Chair of the Board, I, to share a few closing words. And don't forget to post your pictures on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn, and be sure to tag the Federation and use the hashtag, hashtag PassoverFedFood. Oh, thank you, Haley. Hi, everyone. I'm Carolyn. And uh, this has been such a fun event. And I love seeing all the different faces. Some of you I have never met before and I look forward to meeting you. And some of you I know very well. Lois Coteen, you're right in front of me. I can see your face. I know a lot of you, hi Lois. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what a fun way to bring in Passover. And Haley and Ben, I remember meeting you probably like a year ago with the I and I group as these emerging leaders. And now you're leading this Passover group and it that is just so wonderful. I want to thank you so much. And it's really nice to see how you've just, you know, dove into the Jewish community and you're leading this event. So the good news is you did such an amazing job. The other good news is when you do such an amazing job, you tend to get called a lot. So buckle up. <laughs> We're ready. It's okay. We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> We're special. We're ready. I knew you were special from the moment I met you and it, you showed it tonight, both of you. So thank you. And I love how you said cooking community and being Jewish was so important to you. And I think that's important to everybody on this call, right? Here we are, we're a community, we're together, we're bonding over Passover and what better way? We are all finding different ways to connect to our community. And tonight was clearly a beautiful one. And while it's just making matzo strata, it's also much more meaningful. It's coming together as a Jewish community in this, in this venue. So I really appreciate all of you being here and what a wonderful night. And I wanted to say that, you know, for everybody here, there's some people, as I said, who have a deeper involvement in Federation and there's some people who are new to Federation. So if you're new, keep coming back. We have so many different things to offer you. You can volunteer, you can go to events. 
And I would encourage all of you to attend our community celebration on May 25th. It's called Hineni. Uh, maybe somebody can put something in the chat. If not, believe me, you'll all be getting something, but it is our largest Federation event every year. When it's in person, our last one we held had 750 people. So of course it is going to be virtual this year, but we hope that all of you will attend. The speaker is Lior Raz. I don't know if you uh, any of you watch Fauda, but he's um, a very sort of hot actor right now. And we didn't just get him because he's a hot actor. We got him because not only is he really interesting, and of course Fauda is something that's, you know, kind of the big thing around the water cooler, but <laughs> Fauda talks a lot about Jewish secu security, and that is one of our initiatives at the Federation. So it had a, um, a double meaning there. So it is going to be a celebration with so much more at this Hanani event, and I hope you all will consider coming. Of course, we can't do all of this without allocating to our um, Jewish community. So if you have never made a gift to the Federation, please consider to make one. And if you have already been donors to the Federation, I thank you and please continue to do so because your dollars matter. It's how we really impact our community and help people in need. And you can ask Lori Mandel, you can ask Heather Fiedler, you can ask Judy Schlossberg or Jody Engel, you can ask any of our professionals for any advice or how you can give in any way or when any events are, when they are held. And I have to thank our professionals, Lori and Heather and, well, Judy, you're the, you're the chair. Jody, wait, Judy, G Jody, and of course, Haley and Brooke is here somewhere, our newest professional. I want to thank you. And Judy, who is our women's philanthropy chair, and it's just, she's the extraordinaire. She's, here she is, the women's philanthropy chair. She's a past well-known caterer, and she is just the love of the community. So Judy, thank you. And all of you, thank you so much. It's truly a pleasure to be here and to be with all of you and to bring in Passover together. I hope you all have fun. Everybody show your finished products. All I have is my mother-in-law's apron, Chef Grandma. <laughs> because as I said in the beginning, I, I just arrived in Florida today to be with my mother-in-law. Oh, nice, Danielle, beautiful. Lisa, beautiful. Oh, Shirley, I, what did, Shirley, I see your book. Oh, wait, who else? I see Heather's, of course. Of course, I see Jody's. And for those of you who just watched and learned, Thank you. I hope we added something special to your holiday table. And if anybody else wants to say anything, and if not, thank you for attending. You can all unmute and say goodbye. And this was a really fun event. And thank you so, so much for attending.